Welcome, I'm Udaya Pratap Singh. You're joining us on this special interview on NewsX. Uh, we are in conversation with a star who needs no introduction. Uh, uh, he's all set to mesmerize you and be seen in a never-before-seen avatar in the goat life. I'm talking about uh, Prithviraj Sukumaran. Now, welcome, Prithvi. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, really, you know, the praise has already started. The film has not even released yet. So many songs have not released, but already the praise has started from Prabhas to Javed Jafri to, of course, fans online. Everyone is mesmerized by your look. So firstly, the response to the trailer and you know, the first looks that people have seen. It's been truly gratifying that whatever we have put out there, people have loved. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's, uh, yeah, every film has its own effort behind it. Every film is a journey, but this one has been <laughs> a bit of a journey, mm -hmm. to say the least. Uh, you know, it's, I said yes to this film in 2008, 2009, and uh, it took a blessing in me 10 years mm -hmm. till 2018 to finally get this off the floors because the vision that Blessy had uh, for this film was practically impossible to pull off mm -hmm. from Malayalam back in 2008. So during those 10 years, I think the industry itself changed, mm -hmm. the dynamics, the revenue streams, everything sort of evolved to a point where it was still a big, big yeah. risk, but it was now thinkable. Mm -hmm. And that's how we finally started shoot in 2018. and. Uh, then the pandemic struck, yeah. struck and we had to suspend shoot for a year and a half in between. But we never gave up. We went back, we went back to Algeria, we went back to Jordan a second time. Mm -hmm. And finally in 2022, we finished shooting and then it was a year and a half long post-production schedule. And finally here we are. So, you know, to be traveling with the film for 16 years, 17 years, is uh, that's that's a part of your life, yeah. you know. Uh, when I said yes to this film, I wasn't married. Of course, I wasn't a father. Mm -hmm. I had not turned producer. I had not turned director. Yeah. Uh, so all these uh, different phases of evolution of my personal yeah. life as well, um, you know, all through those days, those years, one constant has mm -hmm. been this one film. And uh, so on the 28th of March, a lot many things culminate for me. Yeah. And it's just not one film. So it's like adulthood for a, for a baby exactly. that you've been you yeah. know following through yeah. all these years. You're right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, well, many people refer to you as the goat, <laughs> but now if we talk about the goat life, yeah. you know, at that time, what was your reason for signing it? As you said, now it's been part of your journey for so many years. Yeah. Uh, you know, the look is so different, and now of course it's been appreciated. But what was your first thought behind signing it? So, Blessy or the producers came to you. So I don't know if you know this, but this is a true story. Okay. Uh, so this is something that actually happened to someone. Mm -hmm. Najib in Goat Life is a real life character wow. who's still amongst us and well and you know wow. alive and well. And uh, incredible is the fact that he lived through this experience yeah. to be able to tell us the tale. Yeah. So when uh, when Najib came back and you know um, the how the world got to know of a story mm -hmm. is a writer, a very uh, you know one of the the most followed writers in Malayalam, Benny Amin, who's a yeah. story writer, uh, actually met Najib and decided to uh, write a book on his life okay. called Ardji Vidam, uh, which to date remains one of the largest selling books in the history of Malayalam. Uh, even back in 2008, 2009, the book had been launched and it was a smash hit. Mm -hmm. And everyone was talking about that book and everyone was talking about Najib and his life. And I personally know that multiple filmmakers across the country, not just Malayalam, uh, were thinking of wanting to make a feature film out of the story. But as fate would have it, uh, it was Blessy, the director of this film, who managed to get the rights. And uh, Blessy thought I should be the one doing this. Blessy uh, back then, mm -hmm. as uh, is now, mm -hmm. Uh, is one of the most coveted filmmakers in Malayalam. Yeah. Multiple national award winner. Has made some amazing films yeah. in his career. And a Blessy film is a box that pretty much every actor in Malayalam wanted to and wants to tick off. So it was a no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, there was no... Uh, the uh, idea behind saying yes to this film was not even something I thought of. Yeah. You know, Blessy came to me and he said he wants to do this dream film of his and he wants me to be in it. I'm like, yeah. yeah. But... I knew even back then that saying yes to this film would mean a significant amount of investment mm -hmm. from my side, not just in terms of time, but also to put my body through something, you know, uh, the actual transformation of the yeah. character that I had to be going through. I was aware of it. Yeah. I was aware of it. And uh, when I said yes to it, I knew that I'm going to be taking up this challenge. And I did. 
and uh, and I also knew that when the announcement was made that I am doing RDG with him, I am sure pretty much every actor would have been jealous of me. Yeah. You know, because this is like that once in a lifetime role. True. So I decided that I am not going to give anyone a reason <laughs> to be thinking that they could have done it better. Better, yes. <laughs> As I said, you are the goat, which is why you are the goat. Like. But you know, uh, how taxing was it? You know, to uh, you know to be essing this part, the emotional uh, journey, of course, living through Najib's, uh, you know ordeal uh, and also then the look yeah. you know ha having that look right yeah. as well because a lot of it is is about the look and yeah. i'm sure so much must have gone into makeup and yeah you know, yeah the I mean, and all of that yeah so uh, the, the the so what we how we approached the film was we decided that i'm going to put on a lot of weight hmm. uh, so that the eventual transformation looks all the more drastic so you will also see the heaviest version of me in this film yeah. Uh, during you know when when you uh, the, so the flashback of who he was and what he used to do uh, back home and what he left behind that story comes to you as you know small pieces of flashbacks to, through the narrative in the first half so during those uh, uh, pieces in the film you will see a really overweight me and we have also uh, filmed it in a way to show the fact that I'm you know I have a paunch yeah. and all that so I put on a lot of weight and then we went to Jordan okay. and we shot what we now refer to as the fat dessert schedule. Okay. Uh, you know, till the point where he reaches there and he realizes yeah. that, uh, oh, he's stuck. Mm. And then you break the narrative at one point and then you meet this man about three months later or a few months mm -hmm. later. That's the second phase uh, of, of the character. Uh, and then that's the face you see behind you. So that's the second phase of the character for which I had to lose, like I think back then about 10 kilos, okay. 10 to 12 kilos for that. And I had to grow my hair and beard to the extent you're seeing right now. Then the narrative breaks yeah. at one point and then you see him three years later. Okay. Where he's completely emaciated. He has this long beard, overgrown nails yeah. and long hair and he develops uh, a lot of physical attributes like a nervous twitch and mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, so he his, his leg gets broken uh, and then obviously there is no way to fix it mm -hmm. so the his ankle bone sort of mends itself in a mm -hmm. disfigured fashion so his gait is different mm -hmm. uh, so you see him in that mm -hmm. so this was a lot of thought process behind how are we going to approach this how are we going to film this how are we going to schedule the filming and of course, the makeup department, we had a genius of a makeup man yeah. called Renja Tambadi. Uh, so it was a joint yeah. team effort. And uh, we, we were very keen on making sure that we also try and uh, shoot it right. Yeah. In the sense, shooting in, in the deserts uh, largely means that you try and capture the correct time of the day mm -hmm. for the correct scene of yes. the film. So if a, film ha if, the, if a scene had to be shot at sunrise, uh, the actual sunrise light would be for about 20 minutes. Mm. Uh, there are scenes in the film that happen during sunrise that we have shot for 20 minutes every early morning wow. across 25 days. Wow. You know, there are scenes at dusk yeah. that we have sh this is yeah. that was shot at dusk actually. There are scenes at dusk that we have shot uh, for that half an hour of actual dusk just before sunset Amazing. across 30 days. Amazing. You know, so. It, there's a lot of academic, yeah. almost clerical planning behind this. Uh, so yeah, it was just one of those experiences that, you know, as an actor, you... you for, all, for all the viewers who think it's a, a cushy job, no. it's a glamorous job, it's an enjoyable job, look no. at this. This yeah. is the labor that goes in to yeah. every project and every role. Yeah, I mean, there are so many, like say, for example, uh, there is a shot in the, in, in the teaser of the film, trailer of the film, where you see a reflection of my character uh, in the eye of a camel. Uh, so that actually came about quite organically. So there's a scene in the film where I finally bid farewell to all the animals yeah. that I've been taking care of because I've decided I'm going to leave. Yeah. And uh, so I give the camels their feed mm -hmm. for one last time. Mm -hmm. And we are doing this shot of me uh, with the camera behind the camel where I'm telling the camel that uh, the camels mm -hmm. that you know I'm leaving mm -hmm. and I'm not going to come back. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, the camel in frame suddenly stopped eating mm -hmm. and stood up and looked at me. Yeah. Like he's heard some shocking news of information yeah. and the director just suddenly, bless you, suddenly said, wow, I would love to get that yeah. from the opposite angle. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like you would love to get a reaction from the camel? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. So obviously, you know, you can't 
talk to a camel and yeah. get it to act. So, and we were shooting that scene at around 5.15, 5.30 in the evening. Okay. So we switched the camera, obviously the camel wouldn't do it. For the next 8 or 9 days, every day, whatever we were doing, at around 4.30 we would stop. Yeah. We would go back to that place. Yeah, keep the camera and try and cajole the camel <laughs> into coming into that position. Finally, we got that shot. Wow. And that is how the entire film has been made. Yeah. Every single moment in the film that you see, that's how it's been made. Amazing. And uh, I don't know how many films you can do like that. I don't know how many films as an actor you get to live. Yeah. Uh, you get to be part of. Yeah. That's been made with such attention to detail and it's such a labor of love. As you said, yeah. that's why it's, it's not a film, it's a journey yeah. you know, for you. Uh, also, another aspect, A.R. Rahman. Oh, yeah, Pukuti, yeah. you know, uh, working with them, having them on board for this project, how much do you believe it, it adds to the international scale of it as well? So, the f one of the first names that Blessy and me discussed once we shook hands and decided we are doing this film is Mr. A.R. Rahman. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then in 2009, 2010, uh, we had no idea how we get to him. Mm -hmm. uh, he made his debut in Malayalam. I don't know how many people know this. Oh, okay. A.R. Rahman's so first film is in Malayalam. But that was in the early 90s. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's never done a Malayalam film. He then became the global superstar that he is today. And when we decided that we want to try and take this film to him, we didn't even know how to get to him. Because at that point, I think he was working out of Los Angeles. Okay. He had a studio in London and he was doing a lot of Hollywood films. But finally, we managed to get to Raman sir. And that is where you realize what true genius is all about. You know. Uh, it took one narration, about half an hour, for Rahman sir to suddenly understand that something very special is being made. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, he said something very special. He understood what we are trying to do and he said, I am doing this film. Okay. And uh, we didn't know if we could be able to, we, we are going to be able to afford Rahman sir. Yeah. We are going to be able to get him to invest that kind of time. And you won't believe this. Rahman sir is one of the busiest music composers in the world. And he's he's not someone who just does Indian cinema. The kind of time he's invested in this film. He told us he wants to come and see the place we are filming in. He came to Jordan. Wow. He spent three days, four days uh, on the sets with us. Wow. He recorded the sounds of the animals, the desert, mm -hmm. the wind and everything. Uh, and he came there and he felt when he was sitting uh, in our, inside our set, the Masara set, he felt like he wanted to do one more song. And he did another song for the film. Then he uh, was scoring the film, he was re-recording the film. And he suddenly decided there, you know, I want to do a song about hope. Mm. Uh, I want to do a song about hope because this film makes me feel that way. Yeah. And there's this hope song that he's just done. And my God, I mean, for someone like him to be so influenced with the film that's been made, I think there is no bigger certificate for the film. Well, that's his belief in the project, I think. That yeah, and I actually... Uh, <coughs> Few days back, uh, we had the audio launch. On the 10th, mm -hmm. we had the audio launch of this film in Cochin. And I was finishing a shoot in Los Angeles and I was on my way back from the US. So I had a connection in Dubai. So when I walked into the aircraft in Dubai, I realized the seat next to me, Ramansa was sitting. Oh. And the first thing was, that's, I've, I'm, I was seeing him after a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first thing I told him is, sir, you know, I, I so wish, uh, the songs now you've all heard, but the background score, mm -hmm. I told him, I so wish, I could listen to that when I was acting, you know, because he's made music like a character. The thing is, this is not a very verbose film at all. Large chunks of the film only have the sounds of the desert and silence mm -hmm. and the animals and this one man in his soul, solitude. And there is nothing that is being said. Mm -hmm. So pretty much there's a camera on my face and, you know, I, I don't, I, we, we decided I didn't want to convey stuff by performing, you know, like, uh, it's not like what is happening inside him, I just, I'm, I'm just trying to feel that and I'm hoping and praying it gets across to the people. Yeah. But what Rahman Sar has done, you know, what, the layer that he's added is just amazing. He's just done magic to this. Today. Same with Rasul. Uh, you know, we decided we, so this is all very aspirational, right? When you think of a film like this, you want to try and get the best talent in the yeah. world. And obviously, I mean, Rasul is one of the finest sound designers the world has right yeah. now. Again, that is, see, when at, at that caliber of genius, I think people sort of also have the faculty of spotting mm. a very special film. Mm -hmm. And he immediately said he wants to do it. 
in sound in terms of sound designing it's a very challenging film to do because uh, what is there in the desert there is wind and nothing yeah. there is just wind the wind creates different noises you know i remember asking blessed and the director one evening uh, so we one evening after shoot sometimes in vadiram there is this giant blood moon this yeah. red moon and we were, we drove out into the desert to to sit there and look at the moon and the wind was making a strange kind of noise that evening and i asked him how how do we get this across in the film you know that that the wind makes different noises at different times of the day you won't believe this uh, after we shot the film during post production rasul pukuti and his team have spent days and days and nights and nights in the middle of the desert capturing different noises the wind makes amazing yeah he actually did this yeah. he actually did this and it's in the film yeah wow. Well, wow. that that just shows, <clears throat> as I said, their belief in the project as well. Yeah. And as I said, it's not just raising the scale in India, but internationally. Uh, all right, we can spend all day. You know, uh, time is limited, but we can spend all day talking about the film because so many different aspects are there. Prithviraj actually dubbed four times for this film, so I'm yeah. sure re uh, revisiting the film four different times for you. I think the crew also got stuck, yeah. uh, you know, in Jordan as well. So it was really irony. Real yeah. meets real in a bit. Yes. Uh, but but final question to you, you know, before we let you go, just now the IPL is coming very soon and. you know after every match uh, you know after every cricket match that happens during the tournament there's a award given okay. which is called game changer of the match okay now for you i'm sure this project is going to be a game changer i we certainly hope, so. hope that uh, <laughs> this march end of march it's releasing on the 28th audiences so keep that date in mind uh, but for you you know looking back in your career which do you believe have been one or two projects so far that have been game changers for you so in retrospective i would definitely think my first film mm -hmm. uh, because i didn't i wasn't somebody who wanted to become an actor i became an actor by accident mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, so i think the fact that i did that one film that first film is not just a film for me it gave my life a direction mm -hmm. it made me realize this is what i want to do mm -hmm. which is very important mm -hmm. not everybody uh, is lucky enough or privileged enough to have that opportunity presented to them and through that opportunity make them realize that this is what you want to do for the rest of your life so i am uh, i belong to a small group of very lucky people who have been blessed to be able to do that then if i had to pick one it is this film it is this film because uh, i don't know if uh, if i i if i will ever get to live through an experience of making a film like this again and i don't know how many actors in their lifetime the entirety of it would have had this experience of making a film like this through so many years and living with the film for so long and finally sitting here and talking about it you know days prior to its release yeah yeah fantastic and there's a lot for of for fans of course there's the good life finally releasing and yeah. there's also badi miyan chote miyan yes. so they'll see you uh, in in hindi as well yes uh, the badi miyan chote miyan is releasing on eid and i think it's just wonderful that these two films are coming back to back because as an actor i really couldn't have picked two more diametrically opposite characters mm -hmm. so if at all you wanted a two film resume of prithviraj as an actor this is a great two film pick <laughs> <Yeah>. versatility <laughs> yeah. at its best all right thank you so much for joining us and all the very best uh, as i said you know it's really been a pas passionate project labor of love like a child for you over these years so let's certainly hope now the audiences give blessing to their child बच्चा बड़ा हो रहा है तो अब आपके सपोर्ट की आवश्यकता है थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच फॉर मोर सच वीडियोस सब्सक्राइब टू द न्यूज़ एक्स YouTube चैनल हिट द बेल आइकन